Hi, it's Lauren from The Fearless Fashionista. Welcome to episode four of The Secrets of Stylish Women. I recently started this podcast to um, fulfill a goal of mine to start spreading the word more about fashion and style, engaging women, uh, middle-aged women, women who are 40 and older, so that they, um, you know, they really start... Um, understanding the connection between style and how it can help them and how they can leverage it as a tool to, you know, further their goals, dreams, hopes, wishes, and, and all those things. And I'm a firm believer in the connection between your style and how you feel. Um, and conversely, your thoughts impact your style. So let's take a little style journey together. The format of this podcast is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about style, then I'm going to share a style secret um, to help you potentially incorporate into your style routine. And then I'm going to give you another secret, but it's not going to be a style related secret. So um, we'll see the, where this leads. Sometimes I will have guests to join me. And then other times, probably most times you'll have me by myself. Although I do have, um, you know, some ideas for guests who I'd like to chat with. And I have um, a guest on April 20th, Saturday, that's going to be a live stream. So look out for that. I'm excited about that. I'm really excited, actually. Um, so yeah, I can't wait for that conversation. But my goal is to bring you interesting topics, interesting guests, and also hear what you want to talk about. So reach out to me, Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, at thefearlessfashionista.com, V-T-H-E, fearless, F-E-A-R-L-E-S-S, -E -S -S, fashionista. I said the fearless already, fearless fashionista, whatever. You know how to spell, right? <laughs> Clearly I can't right now. But um, so reach out and let me know what you want to talk about. But today, the style secret I'm going to give to you as follows. So you'll notice that I'm sitting here with like a tool shrug, a shrug. And I love tool. If you follow me, you know that I love tool skirts. I have a bunch of them. I incorporate them into my wardrobe whenever possible. But tool is such an interesting fabric. It just, to me, it's like the epitome of femininity, femininity. And I don't know, it always makes a statement. So I love tool. And I saw this shrug and I had to buy it. So I bought it in the fall of last year. And I haven't even really worn it officially. Like I've tried it on before but I haven't worn it out, but I may in a couple of weeks. I have an event to go to and I'm probably probably going to be overdressed and wearing it, but what the hell, right? Like, why not? You know, that's my motto when it comes to fashion. Make your statement, girl, wear your shit. So anyway, um, so I decided to wear it today and be a little extra. And then I saw the tag. This tag was still attached because as I mentioned, I haven't worn it before. So I was so tempted to pull that tag off but then I had a flashback of an incident um, some years ago and I bought this trench coat, a Michael Kors trench coat that I had been eyeing at Neiman Marcus for quite some time. Um, it finally went on sale and it got to a price point that made me feel like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can do this, you know? So um, I bought it and I loved it. What was interesting about the coat is that it has a pleated, um, a pleated skirt. So um, it was interesting. It is still interesting. But what I did was instead of getting a pair of scissors and cutting off the tags, I decided to pull and it detached the label from the lining of the coat. And I had it sewn back on, but it doesn't look the same. <laughs> and when I tried to resell it, I tried to, um, you know, sell it to one of those, I think to the real, real. And they wouldn't accept it. And that's because it looked like, you know, it looked shabby. I mean, I don't know if anybody would want to buy that, but so I have the coat still, and maybe I'll have it relined and have the, um, just the lining swapped out and the label sewn in properly. But the secret there, and then the moral of the story is you need to treat your clothes well, you know, don't take shortcuts, especially, you know, if you're dealing with pieces that are special, unique, important in some kind of way, but overall you should respect your clothing because how do you expect your clothing to respect you if you don't respect your clothes? So that means handling them gently, hanging them up properly. I'm not going to lie. I don't hang up everything every night. <laughs> I have a clothing rack in my room and, um, 
you know, I hang things on the clothing rack for different reasons. Like sometimes I'll hang up things that I need to wash separately, separately or take to the dry cleaner or whatever. But then sometimes I'm tired and I take off my clothes and I throw them across, across the top of the rack. Now there's levels to this. You don't just, you know, ball it up and throw it across, at least fold it in half neatly, you know, throw it across or place it across in a way where it's not all crumpled and, and messed up, but respect your clothing, you know, don't throw your clothes on the floor, take care of them. If labels have to be detached, mm -hmm. things like that, do it with care, do it with love. So your clothes will take care of you. So that's my style secret fits at um, And yeah, let me know what you think about that. I'm going to take a moment to take a sip. Now, usually I do my water in a wine glass, but today we have actual wine. This is really good. So I prefer dry whites, okay? Chardonnay, that's my thing. Um, and this is, it is peach apricot Chardonnay. And it's lovely because Chardonnay can be very dry and, um, the peach apricot adds some sweetness. And this is, can you see it? Sending good, good vibes. I can't get a good shot of the label. The lighting is off, but this is from Venetia Green Cellars, a, um, you know, a brand based out of Delaware. And I recently met Venetia, the owner of the brand at, she came to my Sip Shop Chic event. And long story short, she was having a, a bubbly, a, what, what is it called? Um, brunch and bubbly, something like that. And it was the denim and diamonds edition. Excuse me. So there was a brunch, wine tasting, table games. It was really nice. It was set up really nicely. And we had the opportunity to sample the wines. And she has a, a range of types and flavors. And I bought a couple. So tonight I'm treating myself to a glass of wine, peach apricot. Cheers. That's good. Yeah. So, um, so I told you about, you know, pulling tags out of clothes, treating your clothes with love, taking care of them, but I want to talk about something else and I'm going to make this brief because I have to be honest with you. I have a headache <laughs> and I've had a headache all day. So, um, I'm going to, you know, take care of myself tonight and, and relax and, you know, try to take it down a notch, but, I am committed to getting, you know, a bank of episodes in before my guest on the 20th. I'm really excited. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk about personal styling and some of the benefits of working with an actual personal stylist versus subscription boxes versus having, um, you know, AI select your clothing for you. Um, some of the rental services. I've tried, you know, a variety of options just to see what else is out there and see what the competition is like. But I have to be honest with you, there's nothing like having that human touch. You know, um, one of the clients that I've been working with recently has really understood the value of personal style. And I think, you know, at the beginning of the engagement, she wasn't really sure of what to expect. But as we continued working together, um, it just unlocked, <laughs> it unlocked a lot because as I always say, style begins up here and it affects what we put on our bodies, jewelry, cosmetics, the way we wear our hair, everything. It all starts with your thoughts. And once you start delving into that and understanding certain things, including how you want to look, how you want to show up, you know, how you want to feel, um, it makes getting dressed, um, you know, a bit easier and it's a process. Um, so, you know, that personal touch, it's something that you cannot get from technology, although technology does have its place and it's important. Um, but there are those little touches, the, the questions, the conversation, the support, you know, um, that a personal stylist can give. There's nothing, there's nothing that can replicate the human touch and the human, human experience. Um, you know, one of the things... I do also I had another client who is who was looking to, you know, break free and think about ways to um, really embrace all of the the aspects of who she is. And, um, you know, she was skirting around the idea of embracing her sexuality. And I was like, you know what, 
we need to bring this to the surface. And I haven't mentioned this on the podcast, but if you've been on my website and following me on Instagram, you know that I published a boudoir ebook. I've uh, sat for three boudoir photo shoots. And yes, that makes me an expert, honey. I'm an expert now. Um, I love boudoir photo shoots there for so many reasons. And and maybe that's something we could talk about on another episode, but um, I developed a, an ebook to help walk other women through the process. And it involves, you know, some exercises and thinking and planning and, you know, getting yourself into character and it's a whole process. And she has no plans on sitting for a boudoir photo shoot, but just going through some of the exercises is helpful to, to help you tap into, you know, parts of yourself that may be suppressed, oppressed, repressed, all the presses, right? So <laughs> I say some stupid things sometimes. <laughs> and you know what? I tried, I, I tried to um edit something out of one of my episodes the other day. And I spent so much time doing it. And it didn't work. So I was like, damn. So now it's like, I have to watch everything I say. Oh boy, I'm having a hot flash. And the wine is exacerbating it. Okay. This is real, folks. Anyway, so yeah, what was I saying? I was talking about the boudoir ebook and my client. So I use different tools and different um, exercises to get my clients thinking about style in a different way, because it's not just what you wear, you know, during the day or for your career. It's a combination of how you think, feel, um, and I guess envision, even if you're not actively envisioning how you want to look, maybe it's something that you should consider, you know, style is important. And one of the things I really love to see is um, women who are more senior dressing to the nines, you know, like really leaning into their style and really, you know, regardless of how old they are. And that's one thing that I love because style, just like music, is one of those universal languages. You may not be able to understand someone, but You can look at them and their style can be telling you a story. It's poetic. It's artistic. Oh, and speaking of art. So yes, I'm sitting in front of a piece of commercially produced art and it goes well with my decor. I actually have a few commercial pieces in here, but I also have some more interesting and unique pieces. And my bathroom, I have a, um, a powder room right over here. And I just love the art in that bathroom. Some of it's commercial and there's a a custom piece in there as well. Um, And I want to do the podcast from the bathroom. Would you be offended? (laughs) Would you be offended if I did that? I'm I'm not going to show you the toilet, but I'll show you the artwork. What do you think? Let me know. (laughs) All right. Oh, and then there's a piece over here that... I bought from an artist that I first um, learned about in New Orleans. The first time I was in New Orleans, um, I went to an art gallery. Um, My siblings and I took a trip. My sisters and I took a trip and we went to this art gallery. And there's an artist, her name is Mary Hong. And she had a couple of pieces in there, nice, big, substantial pieces. Um, and she makes art out of glass. Um, like she does a lot of glass work, but then she also does um, work with glass bottles. So bottles that would be on like a bar, you know, and she creates these pieces. And I, I guess I should have, excuse me, not talked about it if I wasn't prepared to show you, but um, I can send you, put a link in the notes to um, some of her work, but her pieces are beautiful. And, you know, at that time, one of those big pieces was out of my price range. And it still is, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, I managed to get a piece that was within my budget and it's beautiful and it's over um, a bar cart. So, yeah. So I love, I love my home, by the way. I love my home. And you know what? Let me give you a non-style related secret. 
So having the right people in your life is important. So I talked about, I, I love my home. So I became a homeowner four years ago. Uh, how old am I? I'm 51. So when I was, oh God, I have to count now, 47. <laughs> um, you know, I bought my home for the first time. I became a first time homeowner. And I didn't buy a home prior to that because even though I grew up in a home that was owned by my parents, um, I, I don't know, for some reason, I just, I didn't see it for myself for whatever reason. It was just a mental block of mine. And it was something that I just didn't know how to do. I, I don't know. We tell ourselves these stories that may not be true, but I have, um, you know, I have a financial advisor and she told me, she was the one who planted the seed. Periodically, she'll plant little seeds. And I guess because she sees, you know, how I am maturing in my thought process and the things that I'm doing. And, you know, so she gives me counsel and she plants these seeds and she planted that seed. And she was the one who showed me how I can do it. And I think that's important. It's important to have in, you know, people in your life to supplement areas that are important, but not, um, you know, not a an area of strength for you. And, you know, I could talk about my financial journey another time, or maybe not. Long story short, I've had my share of financial struggles, you know, in things having, you know, lots of credit card debt and, you know, low credit score and, and, and stuff like that. But I've managed to stay afloat and improve my mindset about money, improve my habits and put myself on a path where, you know, you know, I can just be on a better financial path. You know, money does not cure everything. It doesn't solve all problems, but it's helpful. And it's helpful to go through life when you have, you know, certain things at your disposal, you know, having, having a good financial situation can help you better deal with some of the, the problems that life throws your way. It's not a cure-all, but I'd rather have money than not. And if I can do things to get myself in that place, you know, that's cool. But, you know, I bought my home at 40, 47 years old and, you know, some people may think that that's late in life. Maybe subliminally I do too, but I did it. <laughs> you know, I did it and everybody's timetable is different. So I'm saying that to say, you know, have the right people in your life, have the right resources. And, you know, one of the things I don't, I'm not very, you know, I'm still learning. My financial literacy is improving because I'm, I have more of an interest now. And once you start owning things, you have more of an interest. So I encourage you to own something get some, get some, you know, buy some stocks or do something, you know, do something to improve your situation. Start listening to financial literacy content. I'm getting out of breath. So I have to take these deep breaths, financial literacy content, take advantage of if you have a job that offers any benefits, um, financial advisors. I know a lot of companies do that. Take advantage of those benefits, you know, contribute to any programs, 401ks or whatever, it's going to help you. It's going to help you. And it's never too late to start. It's never too late to start. So I was speaking with a friend recently and, you know, she felt like, oh, wow, you know, I feel like I'm behind. Guess what? If you don't start now, five years from now, you're going to wish that you did. And I know it sounds corny and cliche, but it's true. Just start. Even if you don't feel like, you know, you have everything you need, even if you're embarrassed, even if you feel like you're late, you're not late. You're right on time because if you don't start now, you're going to have less time to achieve your goals. So yeah, that's it. So keep the right people, the right types of people in your circle, round out your circle with people who have skills and talents and resources that you can learn from, you know, and also you're going to be a value add to people in your circle because you're on the mission to better yourself. So that's it. This wasn't really about style. It was a little bit about style, but that's what you're getting today. But um, I'll be back. I will be back. And um, I'm excited for my guests on the 20th. Be fearless, fearless, stay fashionable, have fun. I'm going to include the wine details in the comments below, and I will see you on the next episode. Until then. <laughs>